name is Richard Dobbs. I'm pastor of Over Coverage Christian Center. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your home, your business, your car, or wherever you may be for us to share with you the word of God. Thank you for all of our friends and loved ones and those who partner with us. And if you're not a subscriber, please do so to our podcast or our YouTube channel. So in turn, you can receive a message that comes out weekly to be a blessing into your life. Today, go with me to the book of John chapter 1 and verse 7. The book of John chapter 1 and verse 7, which reads as follows. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. I want to talk to you for a few minutes on this topic. Be a witness to the light. Be a witness to the light. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for all you do for us, God. We're so grateful for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We pray, Father, as we go throughout the word of God these next few minutes, that you will open up our hearts and our minds to receive the word of God. Father, I bind the enemy right now that would try to hinder or stop what Jesus is doing. Father, we pray and we and we thank God he's been cast out of our lives. And we pray the blessing of the Lord will be upon your people that make one rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Thank you for the overcomers. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our partners. Thank you for all those who are a part of this particular time. We are sharing the word of God. Father, we love you. We praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. In John chapter one and verse seven, it reads as follows. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Remember the light of Jesus Christ that all through him might believe. And sure we believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Born again. Hallelujah. So just to get a little a pre into this, God created us with purpose and he knows us better than anyone, including ourselves. When I say created us, he brought us into existence. He brought, he produced us, he designed us, he calls us to come into being. And I, that's why I like scriptures like Jeremiah 1 and 5, which reads as follows. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Notice what Jeremiah 1 and Five says, before I formed you, before I fastened you, I framed you and created you in the womb, I knew you. I acknowledged you. I was distinguished about you. I recognized you. I knew you. What's beautiful about that, when I think about that, God knows the purpose he created us for. He knows the reason and know, as well as the timing that he has us here for. He also knows your weaknesses as well as our strengths. And one beautiful thing about that is, is that he still chose us for our God-given assignment or purpose. He knew us and yet he still chose us. That means he chose you because he knew what you'd be good at. He knew what you'd be challenged at. And he still chose you for your assignment. He did not change his mind about you. He also did this. He sanctified us. He set us apart. He treated us as sacred. He consecrated us. So not only did he know us, he sanctified us as well as ordained us. He entrusted us. He produced in us. He extended us. And this particular case, a prophet to the nations. You notice this, that Jeremiah was a prophet to the nation. He was a spokesman. He, is, he was an inspired man to the nation. But I truly believe that we as believers, you as well as myself, have an assignment to the nation, or assignment basically to the people or God's people. Now, before we get there, at times we can actually lose ourselves 
in chasing people. No, we're chasing things that are not a part of our assignment. And I'm sure we've all been guilty of that. I know I have, and I had to repent. And even after I become, became born again and following Jesus and following our mission, God, I had to ask God to forgive me because I went after things that were not a part of who I was and who what God had called me to do. And of course, you know, when you do, you uh, waste time. You, you come up short in some areas. You miss out on opportunities and so forth. We know that God is faithful and just has created Jeremiah and us with purpose. You know, even after our mistakes, God still has purpose in line for us. He still knows why he created us. He still wants us to complete our assignment for him. Now, when we look at our scripture for today in John chapter one, verse six through eight, it reads as follows. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So we say there was a man sent from God. He had orders uh, to go to a certain place. He was appointed, but notice this, he came from God whose name was John. John means Jehovah is a gracious giver. Jehovah is a gracious giver. So when God sends somebody, he's sending him out of grace. He's sending him out of his love for his people. When God assigns you to a certain place and calls you to do certain things to, for, for people and so forth, he's doing it out of his love. Because God is love and he fulfills his purpose through love. I thank God that God loves us. And because if he didn't love us, he could definitely turn the tables real quickly. But God fulfills his assignment out of love. By God, because God is love. He likes and he loves showing love to his people. So Jeremiah, as well as John, as well as Jesus, as well as the prophets, that we're all, everyone is sent because God loves his people. It's powerful when we know our appointed place and our appointed task in time. Some of that miss out on opportunities result in, in, in ways that we just came up short and we miss what God was doing. Now, when we look at John from the text, John name fixed perfectly because we said earlier that Jehovah is a gracious giver because God loves his people. He sent a man named John to prepare Jesus in the way of the wilderness. Now, we also understand this, that John had a story to tell. He, 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 this story became a part of his ministry. Now, remember, John was born to Elizabeth and Zacharias, his parents, who could not have a child, but through all types of circumstance and situation, they later had a child. They named, oh, excuse me, the angel told him to name their child John. And this was a part of his testimony. This was a part of his life. This was a part of who John was. I'm sure that his, I, I, I can only imagine that his parents told him about all they had been through in order for him to come to pass. And now John is going to be the one in the wilderness preparing the way of the Lord. And I love that about John. John was not a man who, uh, listen, he was a man who was on assignment. He fulfilled purpose. He fulfilled his destiny. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. But there is something in our lives that we must fulfill as well. There is something in us that we must do as well. Well, Pastor, if you say I'm old, I'm too old to fulfill my assignment. No, it, your assignment may change, but you're definitely not too old to fulfill your assignment. You're definitely not too old or definitely not too young to fulfill your assignment. God has something that he has for all of us, and it's up to us to get with him to pray, to seek his face, to listen, to get knowledge and understanding of his word. So in turn, we can fulfill our godly assignment. Now, one area we definitely need or one thing that we need is the Holy Spirit to continue to lead and to guide us in the all truth. Part of that truth is fulfilling the assignment of God. Now, let's look at John 1 and verse 7. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. 
You know something about when John was ministering the gospel, it, he walked in the power of God. I'm telling you, it was powerful because he was bearing witness of the light. He wasn't bearing witness of himself, even though he might have told what God delivered him from, but the main emphasis was the light. Who was the light? Jesus Christ. He was and still is the light. So the three powerful lessons that God created John for, just as like he created us for. One, to be a witness, to give our testimony to what God has done for us, to bear witness, to give evidence, to bear record, to be of a good report, and for others to believe, to entrust the spiritual well-being to Jesus Christ. It's going to be a witness, to give our testimony, to bear witness, to give evidence, to bear record of a good report and to lead others to believe. In other words, they are entrusting their life to Jesus Christ. I really believe that when we are born again and make the confession to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our ministry work begins. I further believe that God used his word to give us knowledge and understanding and how to overcome our situation. See, when you're in the midst of something, sometimes you just don't know how bad it is because you learn how to survive. Oh, you learn how to survive when it's, your body's being challenged. You learn how to survive when you don't have money. You learn how to survive when you're going through emotional changes. You learn how to survive when you're going through all types of trials and tribulation. And sometimes we're in such a survival mode, it's hard for us to come out sometimes. It's hard for people to come out sometimes when they're in survival mode, surviving their circumstance, surviving their situation, surviving and not really thriving. When Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Sometimes you can get so... Uh, comfortable, I would say, for lack of better terminology, are so relaxed in survival mode, get so used to survival mode, that you don't realize that Jesus is trying to lead you out. He's trying to lead you out of what you in. But thank God for survivors. Thank God for people like you who have survived some of the roughest trials in your life, who have survived 2020, who have survived racial tension, who have survived COVID-19, who have survived all the different things that have came up your way. Who You are a survivor and God has you here for a purpose. He has you here because he knows he has a plan for you. He has an assignment for you. He has a purpose for you. And he, he wants you to bear witness of the light. That light is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Let me finish this up. First John, excuse me, in John 1 and 8, John helps us by stating this. He was not the light. John said, I'm not the light. I'm not the heavenly light. I'm not the illuminator. I'm not the spirit of truth. I'm not the alpha and omega. I'm not the beginning and the end. I'm not the one that will keep you in the midst of whatever you're going through. I'm not the one that can bring you out of darkness into this marvelous life. I'm not the one, but I come bear witness to the one who can. Listen, there are people out there that need Jesus. You may need Jesus. You may not never have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's some people out there that need to know about the master, that need to know about the savior, that need to know that they don't have to be in darkness. They don't have to be in survival mode. They don't have to be without Jesus. They are those out there who need to hear your testimony. Listen, you say, well, Pastor Oz, my testimony is not grand. I never did anything bad. I never went anywhere. I never said anything bad, but you still needed Jesus. So no matter who you are, whether you were like Paul, the worst of sinners, or you were somebody who may not have did much, whatever the case, your testimony can help somebody who's in darkness come to this marvelous light. Who is the light? Jesus Christ. And Jesus can not only bring them out, deliver them for whatever they're in. He can't protect them through his word. And that's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we prosper is when we receive the word of God and we take heed to it and we apply it in our everyday life. What I mean by coming closer to Jesus, one important uh, 
something I need to get to you real quickly. We need to make sure we study scripture. We need to uh, have a prayer life. We need to make sure we're, it, this, this is a daily thing. We don't take breaks off because it's of the season that it is. We are constantly receiving God's written and revealed word because it's important for us in order to fulfill our assignment as well as keep us on track. And thirdly, he prospers us. He delivers us, he protects us, and he prospers us. He causes us to be, he gives us the advantage. He causes us to prosper in every area of our life. And we are allowed the opportunity to share the love of Jesus and the, and the goodness of God to those who need a savior. Just like we needed a savior, there are others out there that need a savior too. Remember, Jesus came and so we could be a witness of the light. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home and to share with you the word of God. Let's pray. Father in Jesus name, thank you so much for these beautiful believers. Some are going to be sharing with others. They're gonna have an opportunity coming up real soon. And Father, I pray that you'll give them the words to say, the testimony, the open up the door, Jesus, so in turn, we can share the good news of Jesus Christ. We bind the enemy right now that would try to hinder and keep those in darkness. And Father, I pray that you will bring them into this marvelous light. This light represents Jesus and help us to be a witness, Father. Teach us how to be a witness. And give us the boldness to be a witness. Encourage us to be a witness. Don't let us just walk this Christian journey and not bring others with us, but help us to help those that need the light of Jesus. And we know in your word, you say one planet, one water, but you give the increase. Father, if we may be a planner one day. We may be one that waters one day. Whatever our role is, whatever our assignment is, help us to fulfill it to the best of our ability. And if we miss it, help us, God, to get back on track. So in turn, we can fulfill what you call for us to do. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to share your word with these precious, precious believers. I ask you to bless them in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for allowing us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to you, with you, wherever you may be. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes to share the word of God and pray that you will receive the love of God throughout this season. Remember, Jesus loves you. People may do this, that, and the other, but Jesus loves us, and we thank God for that. The announcers will give you some information on how you can send in your prayer request, and we, we will uh, be honored to pray with you and for you, as well as you would like to sow into this good ground. Remember, our giving is changing our living. When you sow into this good ground, we believe that God will bless you tremendously for doing so. And you will help us, amen, as we continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ, as well as help our community. Again, thank you so much for watching. And remember, without a vision, the people perish. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to the Overcomers Christian Center website where you can find us located at OCCBR.org and we are under the direction of Pastor Richard D. Dobbs and First Lady Cassandra J. J. Dobbs and here at OCC our vision is empowering and equipping our world. To the right of the website you will find our social media pages and if you click on the media page you will find our weekly YouTube videos where you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel, as well as our weekly podcast that you can access by clicking this link right here. If you'd like to donate or give to the ministry, you may do so by mail, or if you'd like to donate online, you have two options. The first option is by clicking on the donate this donate button, which will lead you to the paypal.com website, or you may use the giving app. You can access the giving app by either texting GIVE to the phone number and following the directions, or you can download the giving app via Apple Store or Google Play. 
Thank you so much to your giving and your donations as it helps us to give to the ministry, give to the community, and share the gospel. If you'd like to send a prayer request, you may do so by filling the following information here to your right. And if you would like to visit our church, our weekly services are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And you may access the, the address and telephone number right here under the contact section. Thank you so much on behalf of Pastor and First Lady Dobbs. Be blessed.